Hi. So for today's lesson, we're going to look at the next type of factoring, the third type. Keep in mind that the first two types you had were GCF, greatest common factor, and then we did the, uh, essentially it's reverse distribution. And I'm sorry, you actually already did the third one. The third one is difference of perfect squares. And then now you're going to learn the third, the fourth one, which before we get to that and what it's called, there are a couple of things I would like to review. First, if I were to give you something like x plus 3 times x plus 4, we would do our double distribution on that, and we would get x squared plus 4x plus 3x plus 12. Recall that these two middle terms go together, so we end up getting x squared plus 7x plus 12. No big deal. Likewise, if I were to give you x minus 1 times x plus 2, if you were to double distribute, you would get x squared plus 2x minus 1x minus 2. These two middle terms go together. You get x squared plus x minus 2. In those two examples and all the other ones we've done, notice that these always end up kind of looking the same way. Even on the ones where you only had two terms after you combined, there was still a general form here. So what we have is the general form of a trinomial in these cases. In the general form, if you notice, it's x squared plus something x plus a number at the end. Notice I left the room because what I'm going to do is name those coefficients. I'm going to call this a, this b, and this c. We have the general form of a quadratic, or of a trinomial, which is ax squared plus bx plus c. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because if you look at the two examples I already did, notice that in the finalized trinomial, what is the number out front? Okay, since I don't see it, it's actually a 1. In both of these cases, a ended up being equal to 1 in the end. And because a was equal to 1, when we try and factor, that's the reverse distribution. So that's one of the things we're going to be looking for from now on. When a is equal to 1, can we do the reverse distribution? Okay. The reason I bring that up is because what would happen if I gave you something like 2x plus 1 times x minus 5. Okay, now if we do our double distribution, we're going to get 2x squared minus 10x plus x minus 5. These go together, of course, and that will give you 2x squared minus 9x minus 5. But what's different than the ones on the top? Okay, it's still ax squared plus bx plus c, of course with negatives, but what's different is this thing right here is not a 1, and that changes the way we factor. Okay, see it again. If I was to do something like 5x plus 3 and x plus 5. If we multiply that out, we get 5x squared plus 25x plus 3x plus 15. These go together. You get 5x squared plus 28x plus 15. Again, this is ax squared plus bx plus c, but now a is not equal to 1. Okay, so that's a really important idea here. So that's what today is going to be, is how to factor when a is not equal to 1. Okay, it could be bigger than 1, it could be a fraction, which means it's smaller than 1, it 
could be a negative number. That we'll have to deal with later, but this is the idea. How do you factor when a is not equal to 1? This is something that we call factor by grouping. Or a short way that we do this is we call it the AC method. Okay, so the AC method, what we're going to do, we're going to work backwards. Notice that when we originally did our double distribution, we ended up with four terms where the middle two terms combined to give you this term. Okay, we're going to work backward now and we're going to create those four terms. So, let's do an example. If I were to give you 2x squared minus 9x minus 5. Okay. I recognize there is no GCF. I recognize it's not the difference of perfect squares. And I recognize that A is not equal to 1. So we're going to do this factor by grouping thing. In order to do that, I'm going to multiply the A value by the C value. Notice that a is 2, c is negative 5. Okay, so over here, a times c in this particular case is negative 10. Now what I'm going to do is something similar to what we did before. I'm going to think of numbers that multiply to negative 10 and add to negative 9. Okay, so if I think about that, I'm thinking that the numbers are going to be negative 10 and positive 1. Negative 10 times 1 is negative 10. Negative 10 plus 1 is negative 9. Now unlike what we did before, this time what I'm going to do is split apart the original trinomial. Okay, I'm not ready to create my factors yet. I'm actually going to split this thing into the two terms. Again, remember up here, these two terms went together to create 28, so what I'm doing is splitting that back apart. Okay. However, recognize there are many different numbers that would split apart from negative 9. So the one that we want is the one that does this. So I have negative 10 and positive 1. I'm going to be honest, it doesn't matter which order you put them in, but I'm going to think about something we're going to do next, which is going to be GCF factoring. So I'm going to put the 10 with the 5. So what I'm going to do is split this up into plus 1x minus 10x. Okay. Keep that the way it was as negative 5. Keep that the way it was as 2x squared. All right. So what I have now, these would be the four terms that are the result of multiplying two polynomials together. Well, now how do I figure out what those polynomials were? What I'm going to do is split this right down the middle. Okay. Look at the left side. If I ignore the right side and just look at the left, I see 2x squared plus 1x, which has a greatest common factor. The greatest common factor is x. Okay, if I take that x out, that would leave me with 2x plus 1. Again, think about what I just did. x times 2x is 2x squared. x times 1 is 1x. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. What do these two terms have in common? In this case, I see that they both have a negative 5. So I would have negative 5 times, well, if I divide both of these terms by negative 5, I'm going to get 2x plus 1. Well, here's a really important thing. Notice this right here and this right here are exactly the same. That's kind of like a self-check with this method. So I know that we've done it correctly because those are the same, and what that means, that is one of my final factors. So one of my factors is 2x plus 1. The other factor is the stuff that's on the outside of these. It's going to be the x and the minus 5. So right here, I'm going to have x minus 5. Assuming I did all my work correctly, 2x plus 1 times x minus 5 should be equal to 2x squared minus 9x minus 5. I could check it, but I think a quicker way to do that would be to look right up here where I've already done the multiplication. Okay, 
This is what we call the AC method, otherwise known as factor by grouping. Okay, so in a little bit I will write out steps to the side of this video so that you can see what's a uh, step-by-step process here. But I'm going to go on and do another example just so that you see a couple before you come to class. All right, so number two. Let's say we start with 3x squared plus 7x plus 2. Again, I'm going to go through a little bit of a checklist. I do not have a greatest common factor. I do not have difference of perfect squares. I have a being not equal to 1, so I'm thinking of doing this AC method. So if I multiply a times c, in this case a is 3 and c is positive 2, so 3 times 2 is 6. So now what I'm going to do is think of the factors of 6. What are the numbers that multiply to 6 that add to 7? And my purpose is to break up the 7x. And those numbers would be 6 times 1. Okay, So I'm going to break the 7x into a 6x and a 1x. Again, the order that I place them doesn't matter. But since I see a 3 right there, I'm going to put the 6 with it because I notice something in common. So I'm going to put 6x plus 1x. Hopefully we agree that those combine to 7x. We're just working backwards. I'm going to bring this down, do plus 2, bring this down, and do 3x squared. That 6x is positive. Okay. So I just split this trinomial into the four terms that would be the result of multiplying. So now I split this right down the middle. I look on the left side for a GCF. What's in common in both of these things? I see a 3x. So this is going to be 3x times x plus 2. Okay. What's in common in these? I don't see anything, which means that the only thing possible is a 1. And please notice, I'm going to put a plus 1, because both of these things are positive, and that's going to be x plus 2. Again, if you take a look, this right here and this right here are exactly the same, which is good. It means I've done my work correctly. So my factored form of this trinomial is going to be x plus 2, and my other factor is the stuff outside here, which is going to be 3x plus 1. Okay. If I wanted to check it really quickly, x times 3x is 3x squared. x times 1 is 1x. 2 times 3x is 6x. And 2 times 1 is 2. Notice that these go together and give you 7x. This is the same as that, which means we've done everything correctly. Okay, okay, let's try another one. If you kind of sort of get what's going on, after I write this down, pause it, see if you can do it, and come on back. So I have 2x squared minus 7x minus 4. Again, go through that checklist. No GCF, not difference of perfect squares, a is not equal to 1, so I'm going to do the AC method. In this case, A is 2, C is negative 4, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. What numbers multiply to negative 8 that add to negative 7? That would be negative 8 times 1. It won't always be that easy, but I will show you uh, how to figure this out if it's not simple. Okay, So I'm going to split this. I think I'm going to put the negative 8. It really doesn't matter. So I'll do minus 8x plus 1x. Bring this down as the minus 4. Bring this down as the 2x squared. Split this right down the middle. This have a GCF of 2x times x minus 4. These have a GCF of positive 1 times x minus 4. Please think about why I didn't use a negative one. Okay. These are exactly the same, which means that one of my answers is x minus 4, 
and the other is 2x plus 1. I should have said factors, not answers. Again, if I wanted to prove that this is correct, I could do my double distribution, but I'm fairly certain it will work out. Okay. Now, how about ooh, how about 6x squared plus 13x minus 8? Okay, again, if you think you can do it, pause it. Otherwise, follow along. I do my checklist. A is not equal to 1. There's no GCF. It's not difference of perfect squares. So I'm going to do A times C, which in this case is negative 48. So now I've got to think of the numbers that multiply to negative 48. Let's see. There's 1 in 48, 2 in 24, 3 and 16, 4 and 12, 5, 6 and 8. And when I think of that combination, 3 and 16 are 3 apart, or 13 apart, so I think that's the one I want. Since that's a positive 13, I need a positive 16 times a negative 3. Okay, so I'm going to split this into 16 and negative 3x. Again, it doesn't matter what order you put them in, but I'm going to group them so that the numbers are kind of alike. So I'm going to put the minus 3x here and the positive 16x here, because I'm going to bring down the minus 8 and I'm going to bring down the 6x squared. Okay. Split that down the middle. These seem to have a 3x in common, and that would give me 2x minus 1. These have an 8 in common, positive, and that would be 2x minus 1. These are exactly the same, which is awesome. So that means my answer is going to be 2x minus 1 times 3x plus 8. Again, if I were to multiply that out, I would get the thing I started with. Okay, This is called the AC method, also known as factor by grouping. Why don't you try one to come to class with? So if I were to give you, oh this one's not bad, how about 5x squared plus 12x plus 4. If you could have that factored by the time you come to class, that would be great. Be ready with any questions, be ready, ready to practice this in class, and I hope you have a good evening.